Thank you, River, and thank you, Katie. Um, so like I was saying, welcome to the event. We are super excited to have you join us today. My name is Desiree and I'm one of the coordinator seniors at the First Year Success Center. I get to supervise our team of sophomore coaches. So even after your first year, you still do get to meet with a coach if you're interested. In. Um, and what actually is the First Year Success Center is basically we we are a center dedicated to your success as a student, um, whether that is academically, financially, or any slew of other reasons that you may want that additional support. That's something we provide with our team of other ASU coaches. And I am super excited today to have um, my coworker with me today who has graciously been an amazing partner in planning this event. So I'd like you to all welcome Susan as well. That's so sweet, Desiree, thank you. Um, yes, my name is Susan. I am another coordinator senior at the First Year Success Center. Um, I surprise a big team um, of first year success coaches. Um, they're wonderful people. Um, they will work with you um, as your cheerleader, catalyst, um, and connectors, whatever resources um, relevant to your interests, whether it's more academic, um, more about finding a sense of belonging, maybe it's more about your mental, physical well-being, whatever it is, we know that your experience as students is more than just what you learn in the classroom. So whatever goals you may have, um, our coaches are here to work with you. Um, so I work with a wonderful team of students. Um, I've been at the center for um, I think six or seven months now, and I am a proud first generation student myself. Um, didn't get my bachelor's from ASU, but I did get my, my grad, uh, graduate degree from ASU. So thank you all for um, joining us in this event. We're super excited to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Susan, if you wanna take it away. All right, so before we get um, further into our programming, we first wanted to start by acknowledging the land that we are on. Um, so Arizona, Arizona State University's four campuses are located in the Salt River Valley on ancestral territories of indigenous peoples, including the Akimal Oadam Pima and Pipash Maricopa Indian communities, whose care and keeping of these lands allow us to be here today. The First Year Success Center is honored to serve indigenous students in partnership with American Indian Student Support Services. So what we have on the agenda today. Um, first, of course, welcoming you all, reviewing some data and information we have, um, what it means to be first gen at ASU, as well as the different ASU resources we have for you first generation students. Um, and then super exciting part, um, we have a panel made up of first generation students and staff. Um, we'll go over some of the questions that you guys submitted when you were registering for the event um, and give you some time to ask further questions too, if you think of anything else. Uh, we'll also have time for a short activity, a um, little bit of reflection that we'd like to lead with you all. Um, and we do have some time set aside for you all to connect with each other. Normally, um, we would have this event in person and a part of that, a big part of that would be mingling and networking and to know other first generation students, staff, faculty, et cetera. So we want to make sure that you still have the opportunity um, today so that way you can expand your just um, community of support that you have at ASU. All right, so what exactly is a game changer? You know, it's the name of our event, but what exactly does that mean? Um, so game changer, noun. Um, one, a newly introduced element or factor that changes an existing situation or activity in a significant way. Uh, and two, a person or thing that dramatically changes the core strategy, character, or outcome. Um, so basically you guys, right, as first generation students are game changers. That's why we named our event that, um, because you guys have taken this big, game-changing, potentially life-changing step, right, um, to earn, be the first in family to earn um, a college degree. Um, so we see you guys as these game-changers, you know, you're on the trajectory of changing your life and play your family and loved ones as well. Um, and then number three, as I mentioned, Game Changers is an initiative within um, the First Year Success Center that we've created specifically for first-generation students. Um, so if you are a part of Game Changers, not only do you get paired with a success coach who will work with you, as I mentioned earlier, um, you also get um, invites to different events that we host specifically for first generation students, um, such as Game Changers in the fall. And we have a few other events um, this fall as well that we'll talk about a little bit later today. So let's talk about being first generation at ASU specifically. You know, this is a really big university, and so we want to be able to address 
one, what is ASU doing for our first generation students and also just making sure that everybody here walks away with at least one specific resource that we can talk about or that you feel you can reach out to after this. So with ASU being a, they are actually a first gen forward institution, which is a really big honor in all honesty. It basically means that ASU is really committed to improving the experiences and advancing a lot of outcomes for first gen students. So we'll get to it in a little bit, but we'll talk about a lot of those specific resources that ASU is continuously committing and some things that have been created even just over the summer to be able to meet the needs of our first generation students. And approximately 35% of our ASU student population, including our first year transfer students, are first generation. Susan mentioned that she's a first generation student herself. I'm a first generation student. We're so excited to be here with you to be able to talk about this. And so lots of times when you are a first generation student, when you get to college, you kind of just assume you're the only person. But that's definitely not the case at ASU. There's a very large population of students who are also in that same position as you as well. Some of the other things that ASU is really great at doing is celebrating National First Gen Day, which we love. It is one of my favorite days where it's literally a day to celebrate you as a first gen student. So last year, we at the First Year Success Center celebrated this as well. We had events in our office. We had students being able to write letters to themselves and to others as letters of support. But basically, it was a day to celebrate you and everything that you've done as a first generation student and multiple departments across ASU celebrate that. In addition, there's also the First Gen Zone Conference, which is for all ASU faculty and staff. So this is a conference that has this will be its second year now as a conference that the First Year Success Center and now other departments have really teamed up with to teach ASU faculty and staff about first generation students. Not every faculty and staff member can relate to that, but what they can do is learn more about what is the experience? What are the resources that I can tell my students about and how can I best support first generation students? And we wanted to make sure that that event was open to faculty and staff on campus to better support you as a student, to make sure that you knew that you had allies in every area that you are able to look into. So let's talk about some first gen strengths. I feel like a lot of times with at least me as a first gen student, no one really talked to me about my strengths, the things that I was really good at. And so one of the things we want to start with is that specifically. And one of the really big strengths of our first gen students is a lot of that resourcefulness, that resilience, wanting to be, you know, that game changer in your family, wanting to make sure that no matter what obstacles really come in your way, you've got that determination to beat the odds. You want to make sure that you've got, you can say, hey, I did this. I pursued this experience. I know I wanted to do it for my younger siblings. That was my big push is for my siblings to look at me and say, hey, my older sibling did it. And so that was my determination, being able to be really resilient for them. There's also a lot of that pride in our family, in our community, in our culture. This is something that we love and is oftentimes a source of strength for us when our family is able to back us up or our community is like, hey, you can do it or when this is something that's celebrated with the people that we're with. There's also that really big increased appreciation for opportunities, whether it is different resources that are on campus or whether it is the people that we get to meet. We are super excited to be here. This is this amazing opportunity that we are all super excited to seek out and that really helps to drive us. We're constantly seeking new things that we are able to do whether it is a resource, whether it is a club, whether it is a specific activity, we're always looking for something to continue pushing us and make sure that this college experience really stands out for us here at the university. And we're also really great at cultivating that support network, making sure, hey, here's this professor, let me go ahead and connect to them. Is this someone who can help push me forward? Is this someone who can write me a letter of rec? Can they go ahead and connect me to research? hey, here's the first year success center. Let me go ahead and talk to them about different things I can do on campus. Hey, let me go ahead and join this club. That's one of the really big strengths that we have. Not only do we have our family and people to support us a lot of the time, but we also created our own support network. 
we have found people in our lives who we want to be there and who are going to support us in receiving this education and not necessarily sticking with the people who don't believe in us or who aren't there to fully support us in every way. There is also some potential challenges, some things that we know that may come up, maybe some thoughts that you've had specifically, one of which is perceptions of our academic ability. And not just our own perceptions, but sometimes when we meet other people and how they may view first-generation students. But for me, when I think first generation, I'm like, yes, this is a student who is here not to play, but to make sure that they are receiving any and all opportunities that they can get. You know, it doesn't matter what the other people may think of our academic ability, as long as we ourselves know what our academic ability is and having that faith in ourselves. Some financial planning too. I was not prepared for how much college was going to cost because my parents couldn't tell me how much it was going to cost. And not only that, it's a lot more expensive than when they were in that age of going to college for the first time. And so financial planning may be a potential challenge of maybe not knowing how much it's going to cost or all the little expenses that may come up. There's also that new identity development. You know, leaving from high school or wherever you were before this to now pursue this opportunity, it's determining who you are now as a person. Who are you going to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to stand out about yourself? And there's also that imposter syndrome feeling. You know, you submitted the application, you've been accepted, you're here now taking classes, but sometimes there's that voice that's like, but should I be here? Did I deserve to be here in this moment? Did I work hard enough to be here in that moment? And even though we're here trying to do our best to thrive, sometimes we feel like an imposter for some reason. We feel like we're not supposed to be in this environment when that is 100% not accurate. We have gone through every single step that any other student has taken and we've all wound up in the same place, all pursuing our education. And so sometimes it's having to remember that little piece of ourselves. Another challenge is sometimes with our first generation students, they may be more likely to commute to campus. It may just be that struggle to find time to actually drive to campus. Now it's a little bit different because a lot more things are virtual, but that's something that might have been a potential challenge that would have stood out a little bit more. And another is that sometimes that perceived support at home or even on campus. Sometimes families don't understand all the time, hey, I can't come home this weekend because I have to study or I have exams or I have some responsibility tied up with school. And sometimes there's that perception of maybe we're not getting as much support at home as we want to, or even on campus. ASU is such a large university that sometimes it's hard to know where to even look for these resources and trying to see, are we able to recognize, is this a really great resource for me? Who can I reach out to and where do I even start? But we're about to tell you about a lot of different resources that are actually going to be really helpful for you as a student. All right, so some of those resources. Um, and just side note too, after the event, um, we will be sending you guys an email with some um, PDFs we've made of some of these documents, or sorry, sorry, some of these resources, um, as well as a worksheet that has some college jargon, just so you guys can kind of break that down. Um, so some of these resources, so first gen specific programs, including Access ASU, um, what they're about is all in their name, really. They're all about increasing access within higher education. They have a lot of community partnerships. They work with local K-12 schools um, and family engagement programs as well. There's a first year success center. That is us. As I mentioned earlier, we have um, peer peer program, uh, peer peer coaches to work with you, whatever your goals may be. As I mentioned, we view you as holistic individuals. We know that your goals, um, probably a huge, huge wide range of them, whatever they are, know that our coaches connect you to those resources. Um, some of those challenges, for example, that Desiree mentioned, no, you're not alone, right? You have these coaches you can, who can help you work through some of these challenges, um, as well as, again, connecting you to some of these resources. So don't feel like you know all the resources ASU has, because we are a very big university. Um, know that there are people out there who will help you navigate whatever questions or concerns you may have. All right, then we also have TRIO. Um, they are a set of federally funded opportunity programs here at ASU. Um, they specifically create program with first generation low income students in mind, um, as well as students with disabilities and veterans. 
And then finally, we also have specific student groups at ASU. Um, if you haven't heard of Send Devil Sync yet, it's a wonderful resource where you can find different student organizations. Um, so there is, for example, one group called First Gen at Watts. You can find them on Send Devil Sync, or um, I know they're also on Instagram as well. So feel free to follow them um, on social media if that's a bit easier for you. Um, but they are specifically um, created to help empower other students and um, work with connecting you to resources and providing mentorship as well. Um, there are also a lot of specific scholarships and grant programs um, that are available to our first generation students. Listed a few here, there's definitely way more that you can look into, um, but I know specifically the college has a first generation uh, scholarship. The School of Molecular Sciences also has one. Um, and if you are interested in study abroad in the future, um, maybe post pandemic, um, the study abroad office also has a specific planning scholarship for first generation, um, just because I know there are um, potentially a lot of challenges that come with studying abroad. Um, so we have that scholarship for y'all. Um, and then finally, there are a lot of different events on campus. Um, for example, you're attending one right now, Game Changers. Tomorrow, I know Herberger has a specific um, fall welcome event for first generation students. Um, so tomorrow from five to six. So um, feel free to look within your own college or major to see if there are other first gen specific events happening. Okay, so one of the things that is really important is that we wanted to give you the opportunity to actually speak with other students and other staff and faculty who themselves actually identify as first generation. And so we reached out and we're able to find a really amazing group of people that we want to be able to take the chance to introduce you today. Um, you hopefully have submitted your questions when you register for the event at the beginning, but if you have any questions as they come up, absolutely please feel free to drop it in the chat below. If you scroll down to the bottom of your screen, a little black tab should pop up that says chat. And so if you put something in there, we'll be able to go ahead and see that. And we definitely do wanna take the time to make sure that we're able to address any and all questions that you may have today. But we do have, like I said, both faculty, staff, and students who are available for you. So I'm gonna start off today with introducing actually our panelists today. So first off, we do have Waddell Blackwell. He has worked at ASU off and on since 1999 and has held positions of student services coordinator for Barrett's, the Honors College, advisor in the College of Teacher Education and Leadership, which is now the Mary Lou Fulton School of Education, um, Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College. We also, he also was the East Valley recruiter for undergraduate admissions, the coordinator of enrollment services for ASU Polytechnic, Director of Multicultural Student Affairs at ASU Polytechnic, Director of Student Rights and Responsibilities, and he currently serves as the Director of Student and Cultural Engagement for Educational Outreach and Student Services. So please welcome Waddell to our panel today. We also have for you today, Joanne, Marti Joanne L. Martinez. Um, she grew up in a small farming town of Parker, Arizona, which is located on the Colorado River Indian Tribe Reservation. She's the daughter to Chuy and Lupe Lopez and is the youngest of five siblings. And she's now married to her husband, Jose, and they have two daughters. Her worldview expanded when she attended Arizona State University and she learned a lot about her community and social issues from her bachelor's of arts degree in sociology and her minor in Chicana Chicano studies. During this time, she was an active member of MECA, Movimiento Estudiantil Chicano Chicano de Aztán, and took on many leadership roles, including as chapter president and as regional representative for the national organization. As regional representative, she had the opportunity to visit other MECA chapters at multiple college and university campuses. And from this experience, she was inspired to learn more about the impact that higher education can have on a person in society. She continued her education at Arizona State University and completed her master's of education degree in the field of higher education. As a higher ed professional, Joanne has served many different groups of college and pre-college students at both Mesa Community College and Arizona State University. Her passion lies in promoting higher education and making an impact on future first-generation college students, their families, and their communities. Presently, she serves as program director for the Nina Mason Pulliam Legacy Scholars Program. 
She completed the Leadership and Innovation EDD program from ASU in May 2019 while in this position. And for her dissertation, she was able to assess the transition experience of students in her program through a qualitative phenomenological research study and is pursuing further action research on experiences of scholars in this program in an effort to better assess the effectiveness of programs with great impact. Please welcome today, Joanne L. Martinez. We also have for you today, Yasmin Reyes, who grew up in Avondale, Arizona and graduated from Agua Fria High School. She was able to attend Arizona State University as a first gen college student with the help of the Dorrance Scholarship Prog Program and ASU's Leadership Scholars Program and graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Family and Human Development in 2015. She is Mexican-American, second generation to live in the United States. Her parents are 1.5 generation as they immigrated from Mexico in their youth and are bilingual and bicultural. Identity has long been an interest in adulthood and struggle in childhood for Yasmin, often finding representation with the phrase, ni de aquí, ni de allá, translating to neither from here nor from there. Her career focus has been to help students succeed academically and pursue their post-secondary dreams through jobs with the Boys and Girls Club of the East Valley, so Southwest Human Development, and now Arizona State University, where she has worked in the first year student admissions team for almost four years. In her free time, Yasmin likes to spend time with her family and in her community, often finding volunteer opportunities whenever possible as a mentor with Big Brothers Big Sisters, and completing the Community Leadership Course Program with the Obama Foundation. Yasmin is pursuing a Master's of Education in PK-12 um, College and Career Counseling through Northern Arizona University. Please welcome Yasmin. And last, we have Christy. Um, Christy Jerson Woods. Christy was born and raised in Colorado and made her first across state move to Arizona in 2018. She has loved living in the desert. As a first generation student, she earned her Bachelor of Arts in Counseling Psychology from Colorado Mesa University and completed some graduate coursework in counseling. Christy is currently completing her Master's in Educational Leadership from Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. She has worked in higher education since she was an undergraduate student through Residence Life and Success Offices and is passionate about supporting student success. Currently, she is an academic success advisor for students in the information technology major at ASU. She is married and has one dog, Bella, a blue healer cattle dog. In her spare time, she enjoys being outdoors, crafting, and spending time with her friends and family. Please welcome Christy Jerson Woods as well. All right, and we also have some wonderful student panelists today as well. They're actually all success coaches um, at the First Year Success Center. The first we have Elizabeth Liz Rojas. She's a sophomore success coach getting her BA in Business Law, her BS in Supply Chain Management. We also have Jacqueline Jackie Ho. She is a first year success coach getting her BS in Anthropology as well as Public Service and Public Policy with a focus in Health Policy. And then uh, finally, we have Yvonne Alcazar, sophomore success coach. He's getting his BA in political science. Um, so thank you all for being here and let's welcome all of our student panelists as well. I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screens. So that way, uh, when we move into the questions, you'll actually be able to see all of our panelists as they are responding. All right, so moving into our first uh, question for our panelists. Um, this is actually, we're starting with some of the questions that our students submitted. Um, definitely some common themes that we saw throughout these questions. Um, so we're gonna pick a few. Um, so one of the questions that we got that kind of covered one of the main themes we saw, um, did you ever struggle with classes um, or starting university? as a first generation student? And if so, how did you overcome that for starting out? I'll go first and the answer is yes. Um, this is Waddell, by the way. <clears throat> um, I'm quite a bit older than everybody in this room probably. I'm in, my, I'm in my early 50s. So I was in college before there was internet and before there was 
um, laptop computers. We had to type our stuff out on, on regular paper and hand in paper. So different environment. But I think what I struggled the most with is that high school was easy for me anyway. Um, and it's a different mindset when you get to college. I remember I used, when I used to work for Barrett's back in the day, I would tell students the biggest, and this is all students, the biggest thing you're gonna have to come overcome is time. Cause you're not gonna be spending six, seven hours in class every day. You might spend two hours one day and you might spend three hours the next day. You might have an evening class. And then the rest of your time without your parents, you have to delegate time to study and to um, do your homework and read your books while also being a young person who probably wants to be social and who has friends who wants to hang out with. And so it took a while to get that balance down. Because it was, I couldn't do a paper on Thursday that was due Friday and have it be a good paper. It just wasn't gonna come that way. In high school, you could probably get away with that. So if I had to go back and talk to an 18 year old Waddell or anybody else is that understand that time is gonna be a, a decent thing you're gonna to have to overcome and make sure you understand that it fleets on you when you get to having a good time and, and having fun with your plans and you're playing and Arizona's got great weather too. So it does it, you know, in October, November when it's gonna be fun to hang outside with your friends, make sure you take care of your business before you get down to your business. Um, I can go next. Um, this is Christy. Um, I, yes, I struggled. Um, I didn't necessarily struggle my first semester. I struggled in spring and I ended up failing three of my classes um, in spring. And I, um, in, in high school, I'll kind of echo what Waddell said. Um, high school was easy for me. I would sleep in class and get an A in the class. It was, I didn't um, really struggle in high school. Um, so when I came to college, I kind of felt like I could still do some of those things. And um, some of my, my classes didn't require attendance. And so I used that to my advantage um, and didn't go to class, obviously. And so um, I missed important information about assignments and about um, projects that ended up being the reason why I failed three classes, three of my five classes. And I was there on scholarship um, for my grades, actually. So I was um, in a full ride situation, but I needed to maintain a certain GPA. So I was actually put on academic probation and then financial probation for my scholarship, which was the only way that I was able to attend college was through that scholarship. Um, so I think then for me, it was more about time management. I really just um, was a social butterfly in my spring semester and was like, uh, other people are doing homework. I just wanna hang out with friends and, um, and, and just that was all I wanted to do. I didn't wanna do any homework. So then after that, I really buckled down and um, used the planner, <laughs> which I know people are gonna be like, oh, planners, but truly like I ended up having to schedule like my time slots every day. Otherwise, I would just get so um, distracted by the fun of college, which is cool, right? College is fun. You get to meet people, do new things. That's awesome. Um, but ultimately, I think all that freedom ended up being what hurt me. And so I needed some more structure and I had to be the one to put the structure in my life to make that work. Hi, this is Joanne. So um, to remind myself, the question is on struggles, early struggles, is that correct? Yes, okay. uh, did, did you struggle? And if so, like, uh, how did you overcome that? How to overcome it, okay, that's the second part I missed. Um, so, um, hi everybody. Um, when, I, when I came to ASU, I think one of the things that I realized is that um, because um, high school tended to be um, a lot easier, you know, you tended to receive a lot more of that individual support. And I think there was a lot more flexibility on, on the grading of, uh, of your assignments in high school. I think one of the things I realized in, high, in college was that um, I didn't really understand 
my own strengths and my own study skills. Um, like what, what I, how I was, um, the ways that I studied best. And I think I didn't, I realized that I didn't understand that. And so I was trying all of these different ways and learning from my classmates and my roommates and friends about how they went about to studying that. Um, I never really first took the time to understand, okay, well, but you know, what's the best way for me to learn? And so I struggled a lot with actually retaining information. So when it came to, um, you know, taking, for example, multiple choice, multiple choice exams, um, where, you know, I thought I'd get by with just kind of understanding the gist of the information, I realized, no, I really had to learn the information a lot better um, than, I, than I thought I originally did. And so, um, so, you know, I think my approach was just kind of really going by it, um, really kind of just figuring out like, okay, if this didn't work for me, then I have to try something else and I have to try something else. Um, I did also as well connect with my faculty during their office hours and ask them, you know, hey, I didn't do as well on, a, on an exam as I thought I, I, I did, especially, you know, when I walked out of the exam, I thought I did much better, but I didn't. So, you know, what are the things that I need to do? And so they would really go over um, those tips and those recommendations with me and really um, guide me in because of that relationship that I was able to develop with them. Like then they started providing a little bit more of that flexibility with me as well, um, you know, when it came to other future needs. Would any of our current student coaches like to talk about this since you're living it at this moment? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, hi, it's Yvonne. Um, I think just to echo with what Elle said earlier, I think the biggest thing for me is time management. Um, oftentimes, like as a first generation student, you tend to be an overachiever or you tend to have other responsibilities. So for example, myself, like <clears throat> um, my parents like didn't really help me fill up FAFs and stuff like that. And um, like I was responsible for a lot of my own living expenses. So I've worked um, since I was 16 pretty much all the way up until now. Um, I've taken classes, I've taken like 19, 21 credits and worked 30 hours a week. So the biggest thing is time management and figuring out what you have time for and what you don't have time for. So um, it might, it might um, feel tempting to want to sign up for like 30 clubs and take 22 credits of classes and also have like a cool part-time job and all this. But definitely like think about like what you can and can't handle and plan your schedule that way. Um, and the thing is like, you're just starting college too, right? So there's no need like the pressure to have to try to do everything quickly. Like if you're interested in, in you know, having like maybe a part-time job or joining a club, try joining like one club and try to try and like one part-time job, you know, like 10 hours a week or something as you're getting acclimated to like the classes that you're taking. And the thing is as well, like with an institution as large as ASU, the thing is there are a lot of resources out there, but you might not necess necessarily know they exist. So you kind of have to be your own advocate and do some of the footwork on your own. Like if you're having trouble with it in like a calculus class, type in like calculus ASU mastering, like if you Google that, literally the ASU webpage for that pops up. So the thing is that one of the things that you'll learn like is self-efficacy, like being able to do these things on your own and kind of figuring it out and getting connected because like the help is there. Like once you find like the ASU math student, for example, like you go there, people are like, oh yeah, thanks for coming. Like, let's help you. So just figuring out how to navigate that. Like what, like um, they were saying earlier, right? Without your parents being there to like, oh, first you do this and then you do this. And that's another challenge, right? As a first year student, your parents might not really know how to navigate like a university ecosystem they might not say oh just go find like the tutoring department you know they'll just be like oh okay so definitely understand that there are a lot of challenges but there are also a lot of resources at ASU to help you overcome them specifically I'll go next uh, my name is Lisbeth uh, I think one of the things I struggled with the most was understanding that you don't have to do everything um, meaning like Coming in, I already thought I was behind. Um, I'm a business student, so everyone in the business school were typically like having like, oh yes, I've had experience with this, this, and this. I have an internship lined up with this, and then I'm gonna do this, um, or just things like that. And I was like, well, what am I doing? Um, and I was understanding that like, we all have a different path, and you don't have to compare yourself with others. Um, because obviously I'm a first generation student, my parents, 
didn't go to college. So they, I'm already at a little bit of a disadvantage with that um, because I can't ask them. Uh, but like um, Ivan said, there's other people that are willing to help you. Um, so for me, it was understanding that it's not a race between you and the people around you. Um, you kind of have to form your own path and realize what you want to do for yourself. Um, and the people around you are there to help. But again, they're not your competition because at the end of the day, no two people are the same and you probably don't want to end up doing the same thing that they're doing. And going off of what Liz and Yvonne were talking about, hi everyone, I'm Jackie. But. Um, basically the whole idea of comparison and also time management. Cause I went into my freshman year of college, I was taking 21 credits, I had an internship, I had a job. My time was spread very thin because I was always comparing myself to other people. I was like, oh, but they're doing this. They already got a paper published, blah, 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 blah. But then I just got exhausted to the point where I did burn out. And I think the first time I withdrew from a class, I literally cried. <laughs> like. Some of you, like, I know it's not a big deal and we all end up having to withdraw from a class or having to ask for help. Um, but I think it's really important to communicate with your professors. I know that some people are very intimidated by them, but if you don't express your concerns and what's going on with your life, then they won't know, right? And it's clear to have that expectation because they understand that you're human and they understand that you have things going on in your life. So what I try to do is comparison only into the idea of how I can use that to motivate myself rather than to feel bad about myself. Because as a first generation student, I always felt like I needed to do more. And if I wasn't doing enough, I was like failing my family. But the idea is, do what makes you happy and do what you can handle because if you burn out, it's not going to be beneficial for you or whatever goals that you have or are supporting. Awesome, thank you. Um, we're gonna move to the next question, but I definitely wanna say like, based off all of the answers that you just provided, one of the big things is just being able to normalize asking for assistance. You know, understanding it's 1000% okay to say, hey, I need help right now because all of our first generation journeys are going to look completely different. You know, whether it's the resources we're using or our background or where we're planning to go next, like everything's going to look different for us. So it's absolutely always okay for us to be able to ask for help from anybody, whether it's our peers or faculty and staff that you see around you at any given moment. Um, so some of the, the next question then that we have kind of just based off of what you discussed here already was you mentioned, you know, feeling pressured, potentially being first gen. How did you manage that feeling? And what really helped you as a first gen student manage that? Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Um, so yes, that pressure is really difficult to navigate, um, especially as a first generation college student. I think uh, one thing is to acknowledge that like we're all sharing, we all had all these ideologies of who we were. We thought we could work hard and get it done and that like that enough would be able to help us achieve success. Um, but the pressure comes when we don't face the reality of what we are capable of doing and not finding those resources to help move us forward. So um, for me personally, like a lot of people have shared, in high school, it seemed pretty normal for me just to work really hard and I would get the A and like move forward. But in college, it was a whole different game. It was like there was a rubric, but I didn't understand how the rubric was gonna be used. And like, there was no rubric that I could see that everyone else could see. And I felt really like lost and confused. Um, I was in Barrett the Honors College my first year and I was like, I've never read these titles and never even heard of these titles or these authors. And I feel like, why am I here right now? I shouldn't be. Um, and I started to get this really bad case of imposter syndrome of like, who am I to be in this space with people who have had all these um, things that have helped them get to college where I don't even know the first thing of how to succeed. And then it just, this, this 
pressure can continue to build on top of itself to the point where I did fail one of my classes my second semester at ASU. And that was because I couldn't acknowledge that I needed help. And I actually had um, my scholarship coordinator sit down with me and say, okay, what do you need from us so that you can succeed? We don't wanna kick you out of this program, but we want you to know that we have resources for you, not only at ASU with like the free tutoring center, um, but the coordinator started meeting with me monthly and that really helped me to hold myself accountable because I'd have to confront, okay, I didn't study as much as I should have or I didn't make enough time the way that I should have to get all the tasks done that I needed to. And for me, having that accountability to someone else helped me a lot to say, okay, that person's not gonna judge me. They're truly there just to help and support me. So to tell them, I feel like I'm failing and they could reassure me like, you're not failing, but you do need to do other actions in order to get to that goal of completing your courses. So that really helped me to be able to, sometimes what I say is like, you can't overcome something you can't name. So I didn't know that I was feeling imposter syndrome, but when I talked to my coordinator, she's like, oh yeah, you know, that happens a lot with the students in our program because they're first generation college students. They feel this pressure, they feel like they don't belong um, and they question their, their reasoning for being there. So being able to name something, I could then when I thought about those thoughts again in class, I'd be like, okay, this is just imposter syndrome. I can name it, now I can get over it and that can help me kind of move forward. Um, so those little things helped me throughout. Does anyone else want to touch upon it? Or even we had a question on the side, were you ever worried that you wouldn't pull through from all the stress? Um, I kind of want to share on that. Um, I feel that stress is going to be continuous. Like it's not something that you're going to get over like overnight. Um, I've, I'm a senior now and I still kind of feel that pressure of um, not letting my family down. I think that's my biggest pressure now. Um, and it all stems from comparisons, again, from what other people are doing. Um, and it personally took me like breaking down, crying and having to go home um, like one weekend because I just couldn't take the pressure anymore and finally asking my parents for help. Um, and I think that was my biggest fear like letting my parents know how much I was struggling because I didn't want them to feel I couldn't take like college on. Um, but at the end of the day, they were super supportive. And I think that was something of a stress reliever for me because then I know that they're already proud. Um, and like they explicitly told me like, we're already proud. Like you got this far, like you've gotten this far. If like, if you want to quit at this point, it's okay, because you already did more than, like, what we do, um, and basically what they told me, it's like, but we know you're not a quitter, so we know you're going to push through, um, so it's knowing that you have that support, and sometimes, like, you know it's there, but you don't ask them for that, like, constant reassurance, which also helps, um, so don't be afraid to talk to the people that love you and care for you, um, because at the end of the day, those are the people that you'll turn to when you need something or when the stress just gets too much to you. It's better to just vent it out at one point than just constantly like keeping it in and in and then at the end, it's gonna not work out the way you wished it would. Yeah, I definitely wanna echo exactly what Liz has said. Like there's a reason people, there's a reason why people say like it's called like managing stress not like curing stress because stress is like a lifetime, like ongoing thing that will come and go and wax and wane through various different things that you go on to do in life. So definitely learning, I think one of the things that like I had a hard time that I like recently, like I'm also a senior, like recently just learned to overcome was like the feeling that you need to like handle everything by yourself because like your first gen, like one of your strengths is that like you're really capable and you know how to handle things by yourself. But like a lot, you know, the, the converse of that, is that like you're also like you also tend to not like share these things with other people like you don't share the fact that you're feeling stressed or that oh you're overwhelmed or you're tired or you have anxiety or you're feeling these things and so it's like you don't have to carry these things like all the time by yourself and you don't have to keep these things to yourself like it's okay to talk to people and ask people for help 
and share these feelings and recognizing, you know, what you're feeling. Cause that's the same, like, cause that's like really important as well. I think, um, I think, um, I think you guys were talking about there. You can't like overcome what you can't name, you know, sometimes like you really do have to sit down and be like, Hey, I'm feeling really tired and stressed, like, and admitting that. And that's okay. Like feeling stressed and tired or feeling overwhelmed doesn't mean that you failed or doesn't mean anything. It just means like this point in time, you have a lot in life going on and that's okay. So just recognizing that is the biggest thing and figuring out like how you can get the help um, that you need in order to kind of push through what you're going through. Like ASU has counseling on campus that you can go to and the first consultation is like free. So you can go and have this conversation with someone like on campus, for example. And if it's not, you know, if you don't feel comfortable going with the counseling on campus, if you have like a friend that you can talk to or some family member that you can kind of share like what you're going through, even just kind of venting and saying these things out loud can um, really help relieve some of that. So just know that you're not alone and that you don't have to deal with your problems and stuff alone and that there are people out there that are kind of ready and willing to help you and give you the support that you need to succeed. And I guess to that other comment, like worry that you wouldn't pull through. Um, I, think there, I, think, I think there was a moment like that, but at the end of the day, like you really just have to kind of keep on leaving yourself, like believing in yourself and the fact that like you're in college for a reason, like you got accepted for a reason. And if you, you know, if you have scholarships, awards or whatever, like you got those things for a reason. And you know, that's because other people believed in you, whether it was the university or the person that gave you the scholarship or the academic program that you're in, like whatever the reason is, like you were there because someone believed in you and believed that you have what it takes to succeed and go on and do something great. So you just gotta kind of keep on believing that and don't really like allow yourself to feel like, oh, I'm not gonna make it, I can't do it. Like if you keep pushing and you do your best to like, you know, ask for help when you need it and not feel ashamed to go like and get help for the things that you need help with, whether it's tutoring or whether it's counseling or whether it's like seeing your success coach or seeing career services because you need help with your resume. Like all these things, like we have people there and resources there to help you and you're not alone. So you don't have to deal with everything alone. Like it's okay to get help because ultimately like that's what's going to help you like succeed and keep going. I have a story that's a little bit different. <laughs> so my, even though we grew up poor, I'm talking like, you know, poor as poor can be. My parents always made it seem like college was to high school, what high school was to middle school. So it wasn't like it was a choice. It's like, you're going, you're going to college. It's just a matter of how you pay for it. So I think having gone through the stress before I got there, um, helped a lot uh, in FYI, I've been a, a playing point guard in college. So I got to school on an athletic scholarship. And so I was confident that I was gonna be able to stay because it was, hey, I'm, just, I'm gonna go to high school again for another four years after high school, it's gonna be the same thing. So once I got past the initial stuff we talked about, I, um, that I talked about earlier, I didn't know if uh, the school that I got a scholarship with, I didn't know if I wanted to go back after my first year. I just, it was, Okay, the experience was okay. I had a good time and whatever, but I just didn't know if I really wanted to go back for a second year. I was away from home in a different state, missing my friends and, you know, having relationships with my high school first love and all that kind of stuff. And so my dad said, well, if you're not going to go back to school, you're going to get a job. And by the way, I'm from Tucson. And ironically, that summer, I got a job working outside. And that summer ended up being one of the hottest days in Arizona history in Tucson, which was 120 degrees. The motivation was suddenly re-energized and I was graduated from school in three and a half years. So it was just, I just, I, I, I tell young folks every once in a while that if when you have the pressure that you know you want to go and you can go, you don't know how you're going to get there. And then when you figure out how to get there, it's like, well, Everything else is, I think, is going to be. But I can do the work. I, I can put in the time. I can make avail myself. And I I just marvel at all the resources you all have now, like career services. I'd have been like, what's that? Um, student government. What's that? I you know I was it, it was basketball, food, and rest, and then homework and school is all it was. It wasn't anything more than that. Um, so. I, I'm glad you all are, are able to avail yourself of all these wonderful undertakings because when I went to school, the focus was so narrow. And by the way, I also majored in the wrong thing. I majored in business. I should have been an education major or a philosophy major. 
but that wasn't in vogue at the time. It was business, 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 business. And it's like, I couldn't give a dang about that. But when I got to higher ed, I got a master's degree in education, way different GPA, way different interest level, way different, you fill in the blank. So it's, um, yeah, I just, I, I'm so happy to be a part of what you all can avail yourself to in reference to resources and individuals you can come in contact with and just things like this that are gonna put you ahead of the game because once you're done, you make sure you pass that on to your niece, nephew, eventual sons and daughters. And in some instances, your mother and father, if they wanna go back to school, you can educate them on financial aid and all those things. And that, that's just something you either gotta pay forward or pay back. Thank you. Um, does anyone else want to answer this question? Uh, question before we move on. All right. Oh, I would. Um, okay. So can you answer? Okay. Um, I think a really important note to do with stress is that it's something that you should actively work on. And I think when I ask a lot of my students as a first year success coach, like, how do you do stress? How do you relax? A lot of the times they just look at me. They're like, what, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? How do I relax? Right? Because for everyone, it's different. Everyone like you can have this idea of self-care, but it's all about what makes you feel happy. For me, it's like taking a nap. It's nothing extravagant, but it's something that I deprived myself of for a really long time, right? And I felt guilty for taking naps when I could be doing productive because as a society, we do push ourselves to be constantly productive. And what I like to remind you guys is, is especially when you're first generation student and you're feeling that pressure and you're feeling like you constantly have to do something or be productive, you also need to take time to care for yourself. So ask yourself, how do you de-stress? How do you relax? Because if you don't actively take time to take care of yourself, then things aren't going to be as great as they could be, right? Because if you don't take time to go to sleep or drink your water, it's going to end up hurting you more in the long run. So I know that people always say like, oh, I don't have time to relax or I don't just have time to like work out, but it can just be like little things like making sure that you're eating breakfast or going on that walk for five minutes when you feel like overwhelmed. Because I think in the long run, those little steps that you take every day can help you from um, feeling like you can't accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Thank you, Jackie. All right, um, so one thing I noticed everyone kind of mentioning in their responses, um, was one asking for help right so advocating for yourself and just the relationships you have right whether it's people you're connecting to about school or beyond school right um so i wanted to ask our panelists um you know what did it look like for you or what does it look like for you now um, in terms of building a community of support um and what advice might you have for you know our students in in the room in terms of taking those first steps or continuing building that community of support for them I'll go. So for me, um, my community support was um, was the st student organization I was involved with, and finding not just peer um, support, so those from you know new friends that I made, but also from the mentors um, who worked very closely with us in the organization, and um, you know a lot of um, a lot of what I learned about. Um, how to be better as a student. I, I learned from those who um, were a year or two ahead of me. And they really guided me not just on, on academics and which classes to take um, and things to, opportunities to take advantage of, but also in regards to leadership as well. I was able to, to learn a lot from, from them as far as, you know, like how to, how to critically think about issues, how to take a stand on stuff, um, you know, and how to address, uh, you know, issues that were local to us, you know, whether it was our family or our immediate communities. Um, they were really my support system in, in really helping me grow um, as a student. And so I'd say that because of that, you know, as it was said in the introduction uh, that I had, because of that, you know, my, my worldview just kind of like really opened up and allowed me to see things in a different way 
as a result of all of the different perspectives I was gaining. So, um, you know, the more I was involved with, uh, with my organization, the more I learned about other resources throughout the university and connected with so many more people. And it just, it just kind of grew exponentially from there. Um, I'll go. So something that I did was um, reach out to a mentor or who I wanted to be my mentor. Um, I decided pretty early on in my undergrad that I wanted to go to grad school. And so I kind of had this idea that I needed to do a lot in order to get into grad school. Um, but I hadn't really made um, any connections with faculty or anything like that. My, my school is a lot smaller than ASU, but still, like, you can easily not make relationships if you don't want to. Um, so I um, decided that I needed a mentor, and so I just took a look at my faculty that were um, doing things that I wanted to do. And for me at that time, I wanted to be in counseling. So I looked at faculty who had a counseling background and um, you know, kind of made a pro and con list about who I thought would be a good mentor and why. And um, I actually, the first time I met my mentor, I said, hi, my name's Christy. Um, you don't know me yet. I've never taken a class with you, but I think you've got something great um, and you've got some great experience and I would really love it if you'd be my mentor. And of course, my, my faculty at that point was like, uh, what? <laughs> um, because it's a little um, confusing since they had, they had no idea who I was and who, um, and I barely knew who they were. Um, but I think that, you know, that opened up a lot of doors for talking with that faculty about what it is that I needed from mentoring, um, what my goals were in the future. And um, because of that, um, I was able to have a lot more opportunities. Like she needed a, a TA and she, it wasn't like a posted job somewhere that anybody could just apply for. She was like looking for a specific person. And then ended up asking me be, to be her TA. And in the long run, that ended up that she was one of my recommendations for graduate school. So um, sometimes I would say that it's about taking risks and advocating. I think it was Yvonne that said advocating for yourself and self-advocacy. I think that there's a lot to that because from my experience, it wasn't somebody showing me, okay, this is what you do now. This is what you do then. And um, you need to talk to this person, this person, this person, because my school didn't have those resources. It was, again, a smaller college. Um, so I ended up creating my own um, resources and really seeking people out. And I still think you can do that um, and be curious about what's out there and um, be committed to finding something that's going to help you. Anyone, any of our other panelists also like to comment on the question? Okay, so in that case, we have someone else who submitted a question when they registered, and I really like this question. Uh, but what is the first emotion or feeling you get when you think of first generation? Whether it's for college or just your personal stance as a first generation, what is the first things that come to mind for you? Um, I think for me, it's definitely um, pride. And you know, you can talk about whether that's a good or bad thing, but I guess just thinking about like, um, I guess where my family came from versus like what I have the opportunity to do now, I definitely feel proud. And the fact that like, I didn't have, I guess the same resources or advantages that some other people um, might have for example like the like i'm looking to go into consulting now and i'm applying to mckinsey and company and bain and company these are really prestigious companies i didn't even know what consulting was when i started because my parents didn't go to college and i didn't really know anything about the types of jobs that were out there like when my mom went to school and in, in mexico she like walked to school she had one uniform that she washed every single day you know so it's like thinking about like what my mom had access to versus what I have the opportunity to do now and what the resources that I have access to now, like definitely makes me feel proud. Um, 
and makes me feel pride in the fact that I'm able to do what I'm doing now and kind of helps drive me forward. This is Joanne. So I agree for me, it's, it's very much the same. So I won't add more to it other than like, there's a specific person that comes to mind and that is my dad. So I remember, you know, having uh, deep conversations with my dad and, um, and him kind of putting, you know, putting this on, on, on me. And he, you know, he did with him, all my other siblings as well. It's like, well, you know, you know, we expect, uh, um, you know, good things from you. And so, um, you know, it was a conversation that, you know, could make me go to tears, but definitely um, that, is, that is the thing that I think of as first generation. For me, the word that I think of is grateful. I mean, for a while I wasn't, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like we talk a lot about comparison and I was like, I always think like, oh, if I grew up like upper middle class and I had these opportunities and if I had someone to guide me, but I feel like that mindset was being more counterproductive. And it wasn't until I had this conversation with a professor um, after I was kind of like slipping and my grades weren't doing as well. And I just felt honestly unmotivated because there was just so much pressure. I was like, what am I even really working for? And I know I have this great big picture of wanting to care for my family and provide and give back, but I think sometimes I just like lost track of it um, because it can just feel like so daunting because that's a lot of pressure, right? So it wasn't until I had a conversation with my professor who looked me straight in the eye and just said, Jackie, like you should be proud of working for everything that you have. Like that's something that not everyone can say and that's something that you should be really proud of. And she's like uh, telling me how a lot of people like her who came up from a disadvantaged background and humble backgrounds um, had to work for what they had in their life, right? And it made them more appreciative and grateful for their opportunities. And it wasn't until I had that conversation with her that I realized that it's okay that I don't have everything figured out and it's okay that I was struggling because I'm still learning. And she told me that it's not about how these obstacles define me, but how I was able to use these obstacles to create opportunities that other people wouldn't have. So it's very important to recognize that, oh, maybe being first generation is a lot of pressure, maybe it's a lot of things, but think about how all of you have created all these opportunities. You're obviously at college, that's amazing. And you're going to build something for yourself that maybe your family didn't have in the past. And that is so inspiring and you should be proud of that. I'd probably say to echo, echo on that, no matter what trials and tribulations you go through, you belong. You belong. I've heard that a lot in, in, in this meeting today where folks didn't feel like they may or may not belong or that they're out of their league. Uh-uh. You belong here just as much as anybody else is. And for somebody that doesn't know your background or your history or your struggles that it took for you to get here, that's irrelevant. And that's obviously a lot of you. I, I speak of things from a sports perspective a lot. It's like when I hear people talking about athletes who or six, five, 300 pounds who are given a free ride scholarship. It's like, that dude's a 4.0 engineer. It's like, you have no idea what that young man does. He goes, to, you know, he plays on his team 20 hours a week. He studies 20 hours a week and he's a civil engineer. So don't, tell, don't, don't try to tell him that he doesn't belong simply because you think he's a football player who is here because he's a football player. He happens to be a football player, but he, he deserves to be here or she deserves to be here just like anybody else does. And I want you all that are students that are doing this, keep your head up and keep your perspective. You belong here, or you belong anywhere else for that matter. You happen to choose ASU for a variety of reasons. We're so happy that you're here, but don't let anybody get in your way. You deserve to be in this spot where you are today.
can I just say I am loving this energy. Um, we also wanted to open it up to all of you students who are attending. What are your thoughts when you hear first generation? You know, maybe your thoughts have changed just in the last 20, 30 minutes of this conversation, getting to hear our panelists speak. Um, maybe you've been able to kind of take something out from what they've been able to say or just the information we've been able to provide. But if you as a guest of this presentation feel comfortable unmuting yourself or popping into the chat, what are your first thoughts when you think of first generation? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Um, so I think of new opportunities, uh, new beginnings, and I think of um, had a word in my head just flew away. Oh, impact. I feel like with new generation, I feel like we're making you know an impact that's gonna last. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's important. Impact is huge. Like you're making an impact in your own life, but Anybody else who's coming up after you, you're making an impact for them. Or even was mentioned earlier, if your parents go back to school, now you are a source of sort of inspiration for them. My mom and I were going to school at the exact same time for a bachelor's degree. And so I was looking at her for inspiration. She was looking at me and she's like, you're doing it. And I'm like, and you're doing it. So like that impact is a huge part of being first generation for basically anybody that you get to encounter. <laughs> Anybody else like to share their thoughts now on what do you first think of for first gen? I would like to share. Sorry, no, I'm not a student right now. That's what that mean. Come <laughs> um, I think after this, if all of you could just remember, you're not alone. I think that's the one thing that I felt as a first generation college student so much, and like, no one understands what I'm going through, and I'm only me in this world and no one knows me more than me so no one can empathize with who i am or sympathize with what i'm feeling um but that's that's what separates us and doesn't help us like move forward i think is that feeling of loneliness and people don't get me and um i once did a survey for 60 students that graduated as latinas um, or hispanic backgrounds and reading their responses of how they felt as a first generation college students made me cry because I felt identified. I felt like, oh wow, other people were feeling the way I was feeling and like 60 other people were feeling that way at the same time. Like there is this support, there is this community. All of you now know each other by names, screen names at least. Um, and you know that there are faculty members that have gone through what you're going through. So if at any moment you do feel overwhelmed, um, know that you have people to listen to you and even that validates so much of what you're feeling and I think that's really powerful and really important that I wish I would have known I could have utilized as a student. Absolutely we've got some people in the chat just saying how nice it is to know like they're not the only one feeling the emotions they're feeling you know feeling validated in a sense to you know everyone in this room this room um, is most likely first generation. Like look at this little community right here on your screen that's available to you because you all decided to register for this event. Um, you've got faculty and staff from diverse backgrounds who hopefully you maybe see yourself in or you're like, hey, this person's also doing it. Like I can do that, they've done it. Um, so it's nice to feel validated and know like you're not alone in your feelings here. We also had someone drop in the chat an actual link to a first generation club um, on campus. Uh, Ellen, I just want to let you know, we did give you a shout out earlier, like specifically the Watts group. Um, there are also lots of other great on campus first gen groups as well that are still expanding. Um, Ellen pointed out hers just started for Watts. So ASU is consistently trying to build something and not just ASU, but the students have seen the need for first generation support 
and are building that support for themselves and being that advocate for themselves. So I'm going to throw out um, a little bit of research if anyone is interested in it, um, because I'm a, a higher ed professional and I love um, theories. Um, I would recommend that if you're if you're really interested in kind of learning a little bit more about yourself and the experience that you're going through, um, you know, look into at least two theories. Um, one is a theory of validation by Laura, Dr. Laura Rendon, um, and the theory of validation pretty much addresses a lot of um, experiences that uh, many of you have been sharing today about how it's important to validate um, the experiences of like first generation students such as yourselves um, going through this experience in college. And the other that I would recommend as well is um, transition theory. And transition theory is by, I can't remember her first name, but Schlossberg is her last name. And so this talks about at any phase of your life as you're going through um, a transition or perhaps even a non-transition. Um, you know, understanding kind of how you can cope with the, the changes or the non-changes that are going on in your life um, through, you know, through four, four, four aspects to look at. And so if you really want to um, just kind of help yourself understand, and I'm sure that there's um, like handouts that kind of condense all of um, these two theories that, so you don't have to read the entire journal article about it, um, but see if there's something that you can search on it to help you kind of just better understand yourself. Thank you very much. Okay, so that kind of wraps up our formal questions for our panelists, but does anyone have any last minute questions that they would like to take the time to ask? Um, after this, we do also have an activity for all of you folks. The fun doesn't stop after the panel. Um, with our panelists, definitely feel free to hang out if you have the time after our activity. We'll also be having breakout rooms um, that we're hoping you can participate in with our students so that way you can have some of those more intimate conversations without, you know, 40 other people in the room, um, but to actually give you the space to actually have those. So does anyone else have any last minute questions before we move to our activity? All right, we are back. All right, guys. Um, so first off, yeah, thank you all the panelists for all your wonderful um, answers and discussion. Um, definitely feel like I'm in my feelings right now as a first gen student. Um, so I'm really glad that we're all here in community together. Um, now that we've had some discussion, uh, we also wanted to open up the floor for a little bit of reflection. Um, so one of the first questions we wanted to think through with you all is, uh, what are some of your proudest moments on your student journey? And when I say proudest moments, um, that's probably gonna look different for everyone, right? And student journey doesn't have to be just your time at ASU. Um, your proudest moment may, may be deciding to go to college, getting into college. Maybe it's doing really well in your first exam, or maybe it's the fact that you stepped out of your comfort zone, right? And joined an organization or made a new friend. Um, it's gonna look very different for everyone. Um, so we are going to ask that you um, click on this link. Actually, does do you mind dropping that link in the chat? Um, so we are going to use something called Scrumbler. It's basically a whiteboard. Um, so let me pull it up so you can see as well. Um, so we have two questions right now. We're going to focus on the left side. Uh, what are some of your proudest moments on your student journey, journey so far? Um, and you'll see in the bottom left there is a little plus sign. So when you click that, um, you'll see. I think up. Oh, Okay, a lot of people are doing it, I think. Um, a note card pops up and you can double click um, and start responding. Um, so I'll give you guys a moment or two, think through what maybe some of your proudest moments may be. Um, and you can write that anonymously, of course. And then um, after you all share, if anyone wants to speak a bit more about some of their proudest moments and maybe why the proudest moment, we'd love to um, hear that and have that conversation as well.
Owen wrote, haven't procrastinated. I love that. Yes. <laughs> I'm seeing haven't procrastinated, getting my first internship, um, having the confidence to get this far. I love that as well, like the confidence aspect. Um, I know earlier in the panel, we touched upon maybe not feeling like you belong or imposter syndrome, which I've definitely experienced. Um, so I think confidence for sure is a big part of that as well as in um, asking for help, right? Advocating for yourself. Um, getting inducted to an honor society at community college, um, beginning to find myself of it. Um, Living on my own and getting all my assignments done, which that for sure. Graduation of my bachelor's in front of my parents. Um, feel free to um, continue adding things to the slide, but in terms of those of you guys who've already um, written a few things I read out loud, does anyone want to speak to what they wrote a little bit more in terms of maybe why that is your proudest moment or um, maybe some context in terms of what you did or what took to, to get you to that proudest moment? We'd love to hear that. Um, if you can unmute yourself or if you're more comfortable, feel free to write in the chat as well. Hi, my name is Celine. Um, so I wrote about getting inducted to an honor society at community college. And so that was a really big thing for me because both of my parents um, lived in a third world country, so in Mexico, and they never even got to go to like even middle school. So graduating high school is a really big deal for me, but my mom got sick, so I ended up dropping out. And um, that was a really tough thing to do. I'm so sorry. So then I went back to school and I actually finished my GED. And I thought, well, I, I've got to do something. I worked for um, a restaurant for like about two years. And I realized this is not going to get me anywhere. Um, and so I ended up going to community college to do a technical degree as a medical assistant um, with an associate. And then out of the nowhere, um, they contacted me. They sent me an email saying, hey, your grades are good. Um, do you want to join? Um, PTK, the Honor Society. And so that was a really big step for me because it just showed me that without even trying, I could do so good. I just had to actually give it a good effort on my end and good things would come to me. And so it was definitely a moment of realization to say good things can happen to me. I just have to work hard for them. Thank you, Celine, for sharing that. I love that. I think I see a new one that someone added, uh, not letting my not letting my grades drop. Yeah. Oh, uh, getting accepted into Teachers for America. Um, and we'll be teaching in, oh, I think Oklahoma uh, for the Native Alliance. So excited to hear all the exciting things you guys have already done like this far right um does anyone else want to put something in the chat or uh speak about uh their past i also had quite a few people who just said their proudest moment was getting into asu <laughs> like being accepted mm -hmm. to the university and that is absolutely something you should 100% celebrate. Like submitting a co college application is that's stressful. Like I remember applying for college the first time and then applying for grad school. I was like, oh my goodness, like what do I do? So absolutely like congratulations. Like all of these are such amazing moments to be proud of. For sure. All right. Um, so again, feel free to keep adding on the left side. Um, but I'm going to move to the right side of our whiteboard. Um, who or what has been a game changer for you? Feel free to take a moment, um, add something to the board, and then kind of same thing. Um, love to hear your voices, whether it's in the chat or if you want to unmute yourself. Um, and in terms of, this is a pretty open ended question in terms of game changer, right? Anything that might have been a catalyst or kind of got you on a different trajectory? Okay. 
Berkeley. Carlos. Oops, somebody's breaking up. What happened? So I'm seeing my parents, my mom, being financially independent, having to balance work, um, student life, yeah. Um, seeing again, being more independent, all my family and friends supporting me, reminding me that I am capable. So yeah, thinking back of your community of support, right? And hopefully after today's event, um, you can add some more people to your community. Uh, working in high school um, taught me a different level of responsibility, joining different student organizations at ASU. Um, my mom, seeing her pursue her nursing degree and take care of uh, me and my sibling makes her a huge game changer in my book, for sure. Um, Self-motivation, not having to depend on my parents to teach me what to do. In, in the chat, um, a few more people mentioning uh, mom, um, always encourages and believes I can accomplish anything. High school teacher um, told me to register for all the colleges I could. Um, and then someone else mentioning uh, their mother as well for being refreshing and encouraging. Yeah. Does anyone, um, whether you've written on the whiteboard or not, does anyone want to speak to um, what they wrote down a bit more? Um, I, I kind like of want to elaborate. Oh, sorry if someone was speaking. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think for me, uh, I feel like both of my parents encouraged me to go to college, but my mom specifically, like anything I tell her, like, oh, I want to do this, she, like, go for it. Like yesterday night, uh, we were driving, I was like, oh, I want to study abroad. She's like, yeah, do it. And just her, like, always, um, like, supporting me, that helps me a lot. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Liz, did you still have something you wanted to add? Um, I was going to add that I think a game changer for me has been changing my mentality. Um, and that had a lot to do with the little voice in my head that kept telling me, you're not good enough or you're never going to accomplish your goals. Um, so once I was able to acknowledge that and change that little narrative in my mind, I think I've been able to be a lot more successful and a lot more willing to take risks, even though at the end I might not succeed. Um, at the end of the day, it's still something that's worth it because you learn from your mistakes and you also learn from your failures. Thank you for sharing that, yeah. Um, and Liz, I love what you said too, and I think this is echoed earlier in the panel in terms of like being able to name whatever it is you're struggling with, right? Um, in order to then take the next step, whatever that might look like. All right, before we um, move um, into just giving you guys the opportunity to connect with each other, um, other first gen students at staff and faculty, um, do anyone else wanna um, say anything in terms, of, or speak to anything that they posted on this board for either question? All right, let me just hop back into my PowerPoint. All right. Um, so we are going to put you all in some breakout rooms um, so that way you have a little bit of a chance to mingle with each other, to meet other students, as well as um, some of the panelists. So you guys have that opportunity to speak a little bit more intimately as Desiree, Desiree said earlier. Um, so in a moment, we're gonna put you in breakout rooms. I think it's gonna pop up um, at the bottom of your Zoom. So you're gonna wanna, I think, click accept to actually hop into that jump out, uh, breakout room. And we're gonna give you about 15, 20 minutes um, before we kind of bring bring y'all um, together just to go over some of our future events that the First Year Success Center has. And just to, again, thank you all for, for joining and participating today.
All right, everyone, welcome back. I hope that you had some great discussions with your group. We know we miss being in person, so we wanted to give you the chance to at least be able to connect with each other online at this time. Um, hopefully you, you know, we talked about it a lot today, but being able to build that community. So this is already a community that is clearly here to support you with the introduction, introduction of this event, or even just seeing that there's other first-gen students, faculty, and staff with you. So we did mention earlier that we are from the First Year Success Center. So if you are interested in meeting with a coach, you can absolutely schedule an appointment with a coach today. Most of you are already assigned to a coach already, which you can find on your My ASU page. If you go on the right hand side under academics, you'll be able to see a little coaching tab and that is your coach for the entire academic year. So from now until the end of May or right until the school year ends. So our coaches would definitely love to meet with you. Many of our coaches are first gen themselves, including the three student panelists we had. They are all students who work within our first year success center and they all themselves are first gen. If you don't have a coach automatically assigned to you already, that's fine. We would absolutely love to connect you with a coach that you can talk to. A lot of you folks ask questions about what are resources that I can be connected with? Where can I sign up for tutoring? How do I get involved? And those are absolutely things that your coach can personally assist you with. That is our direct number, uh, 480-965-3289, or that is also the link for our quick thing that you can get onto. You can also go onto our website on ASU and there is a link to book with your coach there as well, or even just calling our center will get you connected to a coach. So we do have some upcoming events. Like I said, we've got many things planned. Susan mentioned it, there are great things to look forward to. So our next event that we do have available for you is Taming Your Money Jungle. Finances is a huge part of the college experience. And we touched upon it earlier about one of the challenges of being first gen is that financial planning. So this event is online, September 29th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m but it kind of helps to answer some of the questions. You know, if you feel guilty about spending money, if you're afraid of accumulating too much debt in college, and does real life feel unrealistically expensive? We have someone who is actually a professional who's going to be able to talk to you about it, really giving you this survival guide to spending and saving while you're in college. You can still save as an undergraduate student pursuing their degree. And you'll be able to hear from students how they are able to chain their money jungle and being able to learn some of those tips and tricks as well. And then we also have for you, show me the money, um, which if you know the reference of what that movie is from, I give you major credit for it. But this event will be October 21st from three to five as well. In this workshop, you'll get to really learn how to not just keep your current scholarships, but how to receive new scholarships as a student at ASU. You'll be able to connect with other success coaches, other students and financial aid experts to really figure out what they themselves have done. We wanna make sure that you can walk out feeling like you can be a really strong candidate so that way people will show you the money. Um, but you can see the RSVP link on the right hand side of the page as well. But we are definitely excited about these events. I know Show Me the Money, I have been to it as a student and I absolutely loved the event. Um, it's very engaging and the entire point is to make sure that this is just another resource to support you as a student. So that way you can get as many scholarships as possible and give yourself the best chance to receive them. And that is all we have for you folks today. If you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. But thank you all of you for joining us for this event today. Thank you for our panelists. Kenna, thank you enough for being here for our students and showing that additional support. Thank you for our students for attending. It means a lot for us that you registered and found the time to attend this event as well. Um, so thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. You can also reach out to the First Year Success Center. You can reach out to me or Susan. Um, we're more than happy to make sure that you continue to feel supported as a first generation student. Thank you all. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you for coming.